Welcome to the FL Studio video tutorial part 1. In the first part of our video tutorial trilogy, I'll start by explaining some basics about the program buildup. Thereafter, I'll tell you about the FL Studio user interface, which is shown here on the screen. If you want to take full advantage of FL Studio, it's important to understand the composition of the program. When Fruity Loops was first released, it was a simple drum machine. Since then, FL Studio has gone through incredible changes, from programming simple drum patterns to being a complete top-of-the-line software sequencer. Still, the program's history as a drum machine is seen in the easy-to-use interface. Let's take a look. The step sequencer, which we see here, are our most important starting point. In the step sequencer we see a horizontal view of our soundtracks. The step sequencer is ideal for programming drum loops and simple melodies. The individual loop you make in the step sequencer is called a pattern. In order to be able to variate our tracks and do breaks, variations and bridges, it's essential that we are able to create several different patterns. In the display window that reads pad, you are able to keep track on the different patterns by holding down the left mouse button and scrolling up or down from 1 to 999 different patterns. The playlist is an equally important part of FL Studio as it is here you arrange your different patterns from the step sequencer to be played in a specific order. As you can see in the left side of the playlist there is a list that goes from pattern 1 downwards to pattern 2, pattern 3 and so on. Remember that we have 999 possible patterns, so the limitations are few. Horizontally with the numbers in the black bar you see the playlist timeline. This shows you how far your arrangement goes. To choose a specific pattern and place it in the playlist as part of the whole arrangement, left click next to the number of the desired pattern. The piano roll is the third and final of our primary operating fields. This is where we'll compose our more advanced melodies. For instance, a piano, a guitar, or some strings that we would like to play in chords or various octaves. In the left side of the piano roll, you see a long vertical keyboard which is divided into octaves with 12 keys each. Left click in front of a key and a block will make sure that the chosen note is played when you play your pattern. You can stretch your note or make it shorter by holding down the left mouse button on the end of the block and then dragging it either left or right. At this point you should have a partial understanding of the buildup of FL Studio. Next up you'll learn to read and understand the user interface and some of the integrated functions. Which visual effects and functions do we have at program startup? What do they do? And how do they work together within the program? So far, you have been introduced to the playlist, the step sequencer, and the piano roll. Besides from these, there are three other important elements that you should know of, that being the browser, the mixer, and the channel settings. To the right in the top of the window, we have a small shortcut menu for the five working fields in FL Studio. From the left going right, we have the playlist, the step sequencer, the piano roll, the browser and the mixer. You'll get used to using these shortcuts because they make switching around the five working fields a lot easier. The browser gives you a view over the different archives like for instance effect compilations, presets and sample banks. A clever thing about the browser is that you're able to add your own folders. In that way you always have easy access to your important folders like personal sound banks and previously saved projects. To add a new folder in the browser, go to the main menu, choose Options, File Settings, then click on a folder on the left side. Find the folder you wish to add to the browser and click OK. Now you can open the contents of the folder fast and easily in the browser. Further settings for the browser can be found by clicking on the button on the top left side of the browser. If you have too many open folders, and it gets confusing, just like now, simply press the button in the middle. This closes down all the folders at once. 
The last button in the top right part of the browser window updates the file structure. This is necessary if you have added new files to a folder in the browser without shutting down FL Studio. The mixer is the last of our five working fields. It's here we add effects to one or more of our tracks in the step sequencer. And it's also in the mixer we finalize our song before exporting it into a stereo track. The way you see the mixer window now, we have the mixer channels vertically on the left side and the sub-channels used for effects and mixer plugins on the right side. You switch between the channels by clicking on the desired channel. Thereafter, you can add effects to the chosen mixer channel in the sub-channels. We'll return to the mixer and its functions in the third video tutorial. Channel settings is a window that you will see popping up every time you click on a track. Here you can change specific settings for every individual track. If you wish to add a new sound on the track, click on the folder and find the desired file in the Pathfinder. In the top of the window, you'll see the following functions. Pan, Volume, Pitch, and Effects. With the pan wheel, you can pan the sound either left or right. And with the volume wheel, you can adjust the volume of the track. These two wheels can also be found on the left side of the individual tracks in the step sequencer. Using the pitch wheel, you can tune up or down the tone of the track. Use the FX display in the right side to assign the track to a certain channel in the mixer. If you for instance choose one in the FX display, then the effects you have added on insert channel 1 in the mixer will be connected to the track. In the bottom of the window, you can see a visualization of the sound on the track. You can click this visualization to play the sound. You have now gained insight in the five working fields and I will now give you an understanding of the menu bar and all the tiny buttons, wheels, sliders and faders that you'll find within it. All the LCD displays work in practically the same way. Like in the pad display, you change the value by holding down the left mouse button on the display and dragging it either down or up 